Monkeys, Emily Valken here from the beautiful countryside of Uppland, the region around Uppsala. And if you have watched my previous video on Bon Polska, you know that Bon Polskas are coming from precisely that region. So it's the perfect spot to actually teach you a Bon Polska, as I promised. If you haven't watched yet my previous video about Bon Polska, the Scandi Folk Nerd video, you definitely should before you watch this one because all the stuff about rhythm, style, energy and so on is in the other video. I'm not gonna repeat this on this one, I'm just gonna give you the tune. So go watch it if you haven't yet. The tune I'm gonna teach you today is called Polska efter Gåsvikarn. Gåsvikarn was the nickname of Anders Andersson, a musician who lived in Gåsvik. So he was called after the place where he lived. He was the guy from Gåsvik. And this is a very frequent way of naming musicians in Sweden. I have this tune after Olof Johansson when I was a student at Erik Salström Institute in Tubo, also in Uppland. And he told us this tune because it's a really, really good exercise for practicing your Bun Polska feeling, energy and bowings. Actually, if you have practiced the exercises I gave you in the previous video, you're gonna recognize the patterns very, very much, especially the B part. A little quick note about Bun Polskas in general. They are never called Bun Polska, or it's very rare. Often they are just called Polskas. So you can't know from the notes, because it's written re really simply without details, nor from the name of the tune if it's just a normal straight Polska or if it's actually Bun Polska. So when a Polska comes from Uppland, put your big warning signs on and go check a recording or video of it to be sure if it's just a straight Polska or a Bun Polska. Because although the notes are the same, the energy is super different. It's full of dragonflies here, it's amazing! There's another big one there, yay! So many! There's a little river just next to it, just there, so they love to come there. Well, I'm, I'm gonna try to not look at them too much <laughs> and let's go into the tune. and a bit muddy kind of. I like to say messy and muddy for Bun Polska. I'm not gonna repeat all the stuff that I said in the previous video, but basically it's supposed to be. So just ditch your ideas of nice music cleanly played, which is great for many repertoires, but not for Bun Polska. Also remember that you should have quite a soft bow for playing this because you need to take many strings at once. There are many chords and there are even some chords that are on four strings on nickel harpa and it's pretty rare to have that kind of tune. So I think it's pretty cool to actually be able to do the four strings big rolls. If you are not playing nickel harpa, this is very nickel harpa typical tune. It's still possible to play it with a lot of style, especially fiddle, I think guitar, accordion. You can really give those, those chords a lot of importance as well. On other instruments such as voice or flute, it can be much more difficult, but I'm sure you can figure a way to put the energy as well. So I'm just gonna play the melody without ornaments and then I'm gonna help you about the chords. This tune is way better if you are tuned in the traditional tuning, so C, G, C, A. I am actually tuned C, G, D, A. So uh, that's uh, just me, I prefer like this. But if you're tuned with the C, it's much better for Bon Polska. This is in C major, so even better. Melody goes like this, A part. <laughs> and then I'm gonna say them. So with the chords, the first one, 
you can take already your four strings and you play basically on the um, your second string you can play either an open C if you're tuned in C that's the easiest and the best you can play an E or you can play a G I personally prefer the G I think it sounds nicer with a high E the octave is a bit weird but that's up to you so chord E every time I say E if you tune in C you can play C instead G, A, D, D, G, D, E, G, E, G, A, D, D, G, D, E. B part, the melody goes like this. slowly so here is when you can really have fun with four strings you can take your low C so low C open G uh, and E. Here you can still take the low C and A. D. G. And E. G. Same thing. D. hard but it's really cool to go to the full and when you're taking your three or four strings at a time try to not think of every string as a different bowing it's not you know it's really like like a round a round pattern it's like really you're playing a half circle or like a banana shape with your hand so you're not playing and if you want to be super Swedish in the style, you should play the big banana and then a little tail, like woof. I put like this. You get it? I hope so. I hope you do. I'm sure you do. Um, the notes I've told you for the chords are just my own. Uh, as said, if you're tuned differently, you can definitely play an open C there. It's even better. And you can definitely invent your own chords. Maybe you like other notes, maybe you want something more difficult or more simple, as you want. Remember that playing chords is just very typical for Bon Polska, so try to play on at least two strings all the time. But if you don't manage, that's also very, very fine. So that's all for today, folks. I hope you like this tune. To be honest, it's not my favorite repertoire. I prefer stuff that is a bit darker in a way, but it's still really interesting for a nickel harpa player to play traditional nickel harpa repertoire. And it's also very good to practice like playing on so many strings and giving so much energy. It's a really, really good exercise and it gives like more possibilities for your playing. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And why not also sharing this video with a friend, a musical nerd like you, who might also find it interesting and useful. Also, if you would like to support me on Patreon, it's a bit more substantial and it would be really, really appreciated. Thank you, by the way, to all my amazing patrons. You are increasing slowly, but you are still increasing in numbers. And every time I see a new person who has become my patron, I'm just like, oh, somebody is actually supporting me and really liking what I do. It's awesome. I'm really thankful. Thank you very much. Basically, Patreon is one of the best ways to support a creator that you like. Statistics such as likes and subscribes 
are really great. They do increase like the visibility of an artist, but they still don't pay the rent nor the food. And I am tall, I am energetic, I am outdoors every day, so I burn lots of calories, I eat a lot, and if you don't want to see me starve, well, you should probably consider supporting me on Patreon. I hope this argument was a good one and that you are very enthusiastic about that now. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much for watching and listening. I wish you very nice playing and see you next time, folkies. Hey, do!